Hello everybody, my name is Kat Bowser. I'm your resident fantasy therapist and welcome to my channel. Those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Those of you who are returning, welcome back. Always good to see you again. My name is Kat Bowser. I am a licensed therapist. I am also an author working on my first novel. And on my channel, I like to dive into what I consider the heart of writing, which is the characters. And what is the heart of the characters? Their psychology. Once a therapist, always a therapist. <laughs> so this is the next video in the series I have been doing on diagnosing character and plot tropes. Because let's face it, tropes are everywhere and they're not necessarily bad. Um, you can make them very unique and very fun. And one of the things I like to do is let's look into the psychology behind these tropes so we can identify what works well, what doesn't work so well. So for today, our current client is one of my favorite tropes and that is the berserk button. So first things first, what is the berserk button trope? This trope is um, a scene where a character is either told something or shown something or something is revealed to them and they fly off the handle in a fit of rage and utterly completely lose it. This trope has become very popular in recent years, especially in anime. I mean, if you really want to see this trope, just go pick any anime and I guarantee you it will be in there somewhere. <laughs> this trope is interesting to me because it can be both a serious trope and a funny one. So you definitely have scenes where characters flip out. It's seemingly the silliest thing, like um, being told that they're too short or things like that. But it can also be, for example, um, if someone they love is threatened and then suddenly they are utterly and completely competent. They're this massive fighter. So this is a fun one to diagnose because you'll see the berserk button in a lot of different clinical conditions, um, just the ones off the top of my head, um, PTSD, acute stress disorder, intermittent explosive disorder, um, also just generally people that have difficulty with anger, this comes up a lot. So rather than diving into probably the seven to ten different um, diagnoses that this probably shows up in, I thought we'd just talk about specifically what happens when this um, berserk button gets pushed. So first and foremost, um, the berserk button essentially is triggering the adrenaline system. Um, fight, flight, or freeze. And yes, freeze is in there. We don't see it very often, but it's in there. So the adrenaline system is designed to keep the body alive. Um, it is designed as a purely a survival mechanism. Um, you'll sometimes hear it referred to as triggering the animalistic brain, which it's up for debate exactly how that works, but generally there there is what we they consider the least evolved part of the brain is referred to as the animalistic brain. So when your adrenaline is triggered, it shut the body shuts down any non-essential functions. And one of those lovely functions is right here, your frontal lobe. Frontal lobe is where we do our reasoning, our rational thinking. And you might think, well, in a stress situation, wouldn't I want to be able to think? Not really, not really. Um, the brain views a stressful situation as, I need to either get away, I need to fight, or I'm gonna just clam up and play dead. That's really your three options. So when the brain is making the decision of what to do, it's, it's very interesting because it's very fast. Um, making this decision of do I, do I have an ability to fight? Do I need to try to run? Or are neither of these options open for me? So when the berserk button is pushed, the frontal lobe essentially shuts down um, because the adrenaline is pumping. You're in fight or flight mode. So reasoning, not, not, not much of that going on right now. <laughs> um, so when we think about the type of buttons that the berserk button has, um, I think the important thing to consider is what mood are you going for? Are you going for a humorous situation that will make people laugh? 
or are you going for a serious situation? Humorous, honestly, you don't really need to do a whole bunch of research if you're going to make it humorous because we all have different triggers. We all have different things that get under our skin and irritate us. Um, so with a berserk button, you're basically taking um, someone's trigger, which isn't necessarily a life-threatening trigger, and you're just having them, in a sense, blow it out of proportion. If you're going the serious route, then you need to think a little more into what they value, what's important to them, things of that nature. Now, having said that, everybody's triggers are different. Everybody has different things in their past that are going to affect how different scenarios and situations bother them. Um, for instance, if you have someone who grew up in a very, um, very abusive situation and they have finally learned to kind of cope with it and heal and move on with their life, don't be surprised if there's certain things that bring them right back to that moment. Um, one of the things I hear the most from my clients is yelling, being shouted at, that, that tends to bring it back. So keep that in mind when you're determining what is it that is the final push, the final button for your character. The other thing to keep in mind is the berserk button should be very rare. Um, if you have someone who is flying off the handle at every little thing they need anger management. <laughs> um, they need to um, they need to work with someone and have help identifying what it is that's keeping them so angry. Because I'm going to clue you guys into something. Um, anger, most of the time, what we consider to be the triggers that really set us off, it's not necessarily so much that those are the triggers that set us off, it's that we are already elevated. Um, as a general rule, we, we range someone's anger from zero to 10. So zero, you're not angry at all. 10, you're in a blind rage. So what happens throughout the day is that we have things that we call like daily hassles, you know, getting cut off in traffic, being late for work, for, for getting your soda at home. Um, the, the Starbucks machine is broken. You know, little things that aren't huge, aren't huge problems, but they're little inconveniences and they add up over the course of the day. And if you have someone who has not been letting these frustrations out in some fashion, then they build over a course of several days. And if you add in something additional on top of it, like for example, heat. Where I live, it's still like 110 outside. Heat, people don't, don't do good in heat. We, we are much shorter tempered when it's hot. <laughs> um, so if you have someone who has multiple stressors, multiple daily hassles they're dealing with, it's hot outside, and then somebody says something seemingly is insignificant to them, but it's, but it's important to them, there you go. There, there you go, flying off the handle. So that's realistic. If you want to use that, that's perfectly fine. Um, but as a general rule, people don't want to overuse a trope. So a lot of times it's saved for a very important moment. And generally in that moment, in the serious usage, the usage of it, you're looking at we, what we would call um, blind rage, or I've also heard it referred to as passionate rage. Um, and this is kind of what you see in like movies and stuff where someone's daughter or parent is threatened or their loved one is in danger and they just... Um, fly off the handle, go into very protective, um, I'm going to fight my way to the person I care about mode. <laughs> and the reason we call this blind rage is because a lot of times people don't remember it. Um, because, see, the, your frontal lobe where you do your reasoning and stuff, we have, we use a, quite a bit of that when we're encoding memory. So if, this part of the brain is not functioning very well or at all and all you're focusing on is the, the subject of your rage, of your anger, then the brain doesn't view it as important to encode new memory. 
it might encode it later. Like when the event has passed, it might encode it as, okay, this person is the one that, that really drove me over the edge. I'm going to remember them. But in the moment, encoding memory isn't important. What's important is using that adrenaline to achieve what the brain determines needs to be done, in which case is usually attacking the subject of the, of the rage. So I think this is this can definitely be a fun trope and it can definitely be used effectively to show how much someone cares about someone. Um, what I generally advise people against is like I said, don't use it too often. Determine how you're going to use it, if it's going to be for fun or if it's going to be serious. And keep in mind that relationship and importance is, is pretty important in this sense. Um, Adrenaline is, like I said, it's used to keep the body alive. It's used to keep um, essentially the species going. And that's why it's only people who are very close to you that you generally get an adrenaline rush with. Now, I say generally because there are always exceptions to the rules. Usually if it's a child, strangers will get an adrenaline rush. But as a general rule, it's going to be someone that you're very close to, you're someone who's very important to you. Because family and members that we have bonded with are essentially, as far as the brain is concerned, it's con they're considered almost an extension of ourselves. That's why you will see parents who can lift cars or, um, or lift huge pieces of rubble to get to their children because the brain interprets it as my child is in danger, therefore I am in danger. There you go. And I think that's just something to keep in mind because I know a lot of times people like to use, we like to put characters in heroic situations. Let's face it, it's fun. Um, but a character is not going to go into an adrenaline rush for every single stranger they see. It, for one, it's it's not practical because adrenaline, believe it or not, it has a, it has a downside. Um, once the event is over, you have what we call an adrenaline crash. When adrenaline's pumping through your body, um, your pain reception is essentially turned off. Um, that's why people, like I mentioned before, can lift huge things of rubble because they literally do not feel their muscles tearing. But adrenaline is meant to be a very short-term, quick fix to get you out of a situation. That means when that situation is over, the adrenaline um, has a chance to ease out of your system. Now your body's going to be yelling at you and telling you, Oh my God, my arms hurt. My, my heart is racing. My, everything hurts. <laughs> and if this is done too often, Adrenaline does have almost a corrosive effect on the body because, like I said, it's meant to be very, very short term. It's meant to be something that happens in a rare once in a while so that your muscles and your bones and everything can heal from it. If it's something that is pumped through the body continuously, then you're going to see lots of physical ailments that pop up. And in fact, this is something that we see for example, with veterans that have PTSD because their adrenaline is so easily triggered and it pumps so fast that it can start to damage the body. And that's why working with them on reducing their, um, their overall anxiety and their um, essentially what we call the startle reflex is so important, not just for their sense of well-being, but literally for their physical body. So that, my friends, is essentially the berserk button. So thank you guys for chiming in to see um, another di diagnosis, bad diagnosis video from me. Um, as always, if you have any suggestions, do let me know. Um, I always am looking for new tropes to kind of dive into. Um, you can leave comments below or you can always follow me on social media. If you like this kind of content, please make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you'll get notified whenever I put a new video up. I put up videos every Thursday and every Sunday. And so until next time, I hope you guys have a good one.